shocking discovery. Ancient Greek cement was impervious to radioactivity. But what reasons did they have to have such cement? Impervious to radioactivity. The view has been cultivated that the technological knowledge of the ancient Greeks was minimal and far short of their scientific theories. But a number of historic testimonies which are systematically silenced show the complete opposite. Even some of the surviving monuments of antiquity present in their technology and properties astonishing levels of knowledge which are known to few researchers today. An example is the evidence for the science of chemistry. It's a field of knowledge of ancient Greek culture with technological applications that was not inferior to anything of today, a field that is nevertheless forgotten by the international academic establishment. Yanis Tsagaris, professor at Chemistry University of Yanina in Greece, one of the few researchers who has been trying for years to retrieve from history the buried knowledge of our ancestors, following the interview given by Professor Tsagaris in the magazine Davlos, shedding a light to unknown aspects of chemical science in ancient Greece, as well as an interview of Mr. Safiadis, engineer who studied this ancient concrete, which was, of course, impervious by radioactivity. Kindly support my Patreon account since YouTube has again demonetized my YouTube channel. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below. The cement better than today in ancient roads? Question. Mr. Sagaris, we know little today about the chemical knowledge of the ancient Greeks. What is the prevailing view of the birth of this science? Answer. Most people today still accept that chemistry has its roots in Egypt, which was saved by the Arab alchemists and then the alchemists of the Middle Ages. The Greek contribution was not known at all in the past, but even today it's not adequately promoted. The one who highlighted the catalytic contribution of the Greeks to the genesis of this science was the French chemist Marceline Berthelot around the year 1888. Berthelot studied ancient and medieval texts, concluded that the chemical knowledge of the ancient Greeks was great and passed to Alexandria of Egypt of the Hellenistic era. In Greece, the successor of Bartello's views and pioneer of the promotion of Greece was Michael Stephanidis from Lesbos, professor of history of natural science at the University of Athens. Question, apart from the historical sources researched by these two sciences, are there any archaeological remains that demonstrate a part of this knowledge? A answer, of course, in Rhodes. For this, the example, the city of Camiros flourished from Hellenic times until 400 BC, when a great architect and urban planner, Hippodamus, built the city of Rhodes and Camiros declined. In the Acropolis of Camiros, a building of a large concrete tank with a capacity of 600 cubic meters, dating to around 500 BC, is preserved today. It's indeed made of concrete with specifications, texture, quality, quantity, strength, and elasticity, similar to today, according to the works of Mr. Estathiadis. He's a good engineer, I think retired now, with a lot of experience in concrete, reinforced concrete, director of the Center of Public Works Research for the Ministry of Environment and Public Works. This commendable work was done in 1978, which is not disputed experimentally, and proves that the concrete of the Cameroon Reservoir of uh, ancient roads is similar and perhaps better than the current Portland cement type. This finding, which is certainly of great scientific, historical, and journalistic interest, was unfortunately not put forward by the Greek state. Cement from 1000 BC impervious to radioactivity. Question You also mentioned the mines of Lavrio of Attica. That's about an hour's ride south of Athens. Answer, or let me tell you about Lavrio. In 1992, the American physiochemist Martha Budway made a statement at a conference in Boston. 
in which he said that the mortar for the construction of the coatings of the ancient Lavrio mining tanks is impermeable to radioactivity. It's a type of cement used by the Greeks 3,000 years ago at least. In fact, Miss Budway recommended that this material be used as a coating for nuclear waste storage tanks. Question, Mr. Tsagaris, you're telling us great things, but few know. Answer, I told you, if it were not for Bertello and Stefanidis, I would add my professor at the Polytechnic, Prokopi Zagarias, who also taught me this knowledge, we might not know anything today. In fact, Stefanidis and his series of books proved that in ancient Greece there were juicy, something similar to today's chemical or chemical engineers. Professor Zacharias urged that chemistry should be written with a U and referred to as juicy. <laughs> Question, how did he justify this? Answer, the ancients said that in order for a chemical operation to take place, the substances had to go through a state of bulk, which was the fine grinding of matter, very fine as flour, to be mixed with another bulk, and with the process of mutation, that is, the change, it will give another product. This act was called juicing, or more precisely, juicing. Those who did this work, who directed the workers, were called spilled. Can you tell us some names of Greek casters that were saved? Answer. It's enough. I mentioned Theodorus Samias of the 6th century BC, Glavkos, Glavkos from Hios, 5th to 6th century BC, Ar Architas Tarantinos, who discovered, who was also discovered the first stone burning machine. How Greek science became uh, lost. Questions. Why are not the words juicy in the ancient texts concerning uh, uh, juicing of uh, concrete? Answer, because the relevant books were burned in 323 in the library of Alexandria in Egypt. At that time, the Helophiles had acquired enormous wealth due to their ability to convert various noble metals into gold, which they sold at high prices and thus posed a threat to the economy of the Roman Empire. Question, so they could make gold? Answer, no, these are essentially gildings. This knowledge had been obtained from the Greek juicers who arrived there with Alexander the Great. So the Ocletian ordered that all the books contain the word juice be burned as it was done. They burned them in the Serapian and in the lab library of Alexandria. Soldiers even entered homes where they had information that such books existed. And do you know how some were saved? Some pimps died before the persecution. They were Egyptian with Greek education. And as you know, the dead man's favorite objects were placed inside the mummy. Thus, in Thebes in Egypt in the 19th century were found two mummies containing manuscripts of Kim Fetiki, which were transformed, transferred to the museum in the Netherlands, which mentioned amazing things. Manufacture of paints, glasses, gemstones, gilding as they do today, and names of items such as today. Today's soda was a nitrine of the ancient Greeks. Bertello read these and was convinced that the current science of chemistry comes from the ancient Greeks. The dictionary of Suda, not, uh, and not of Sweden as it's called, states that according to the decree of Diocletian in Alexandria and probably in other cities of the Roman Empire, they about juice and gold written books to um, concerning Egypt uh, on chemistry and gold books that were written by the ancients, not anymore the Egyptians dealing with this art and with money to gain courage. It's a very, very strange translation. Question, surely the chemical knowledge of the Greeks would influence their philosophical concepts of the essence of matter. Answer, of course, the molders, these practical philosophers were in a way the experimental side at the same time the application of scientific theory. The description of the doctrine light from the East Question. Despite all this completeness, the internationally established view speaks of the birth of culture elsewhere and not in Greece. Answer. Listen, these things are simple. Scientific knowledge is pure Greek thought. From the historical point of view, there are many texts of ancient writers. While the contrary, there are no texts of Persians, Babylonians, Chaldeans, Egyptians, Phoenicians. The Old Testament is the only text that refers to matter, but purely theocratic. 
Greek perceptions, on the other hand, go hand in hand with the current conquest of science. They are deliberately hidden internationally by anti-Greek centers. Now, question, is there a chair of the history, chemistry at Greek university? And the answer, no, it doesn't exist as long as Stephanides uh, lived and kept it because it was Stephanides. Today, we're trying to establish it again. I want to do my duty to the science I serve, he said. On the hill where the Acropolis of ancient Cameros is located in Rhodes, near the temple of Athena Camirados, there is an ancient reservoir with a capacity of about 600 cubic meters. This tank, the construction of which dates back to about 900 BC, it's about 3,000 years old, is made of a hard and waterproof material, the presence of which may years ago urged the honorary di director of the former Ministry of Public Works of Stathiavis, who was in Rhodes for business reasons, to take samples of this material and proceed to their chemical analysis. As he finally found out, it's a mixture of aggregate, which is a type of concrete cement, which is slightly different from the current cement, the Portland type cement we use today. Estathiadis also wrote a special monograph on the subject with a wealth of historical, technical, and chemical information. The following is the interview. I would like to, I would like you to tell us if there are any differences between concrete you discovered in Camino and Rhodes and the concrete in use today. The ancient Greeks made cement impervious to radioactivity. What were their reasons? Answer. Basically, they have absolutely no difference. Today's concrete technology used in any projects, constructions, ports, bridges, airports, etc., is exactly the same as that of ancient Greek concrete. A small but noteworthy and important difference in favor of ancient Greek concrete is that the ancients were careful to give the concrete membrane which is inserted between all the grains of the concrete composition, a little more thickness than one sees in today's concrete. This is one of the proofs of the wisdom of the ancient Greek engineers. Question, apart from the, signed, the specific sample of Camerus and Rhodes, may the concrete have been known and in use in other parts of Greece as well? Answer, I asked the Ministry of Culture to indicate to me places of other ancient constructions, mainly tanks, and indeed, he had sent me a painting with existing tanks in other parts of Greece, but the maintenance of their waterproofing was not as good as that of the standard of construction of cameras in roads. Question. We know, Mr. Stathiadis, that cement is an invention of the last hundred years by the British. How did the ancient Greeks come to know an identical material in their time? Answer. The technicians had the wisdom, along with all their other philosophical positions, to observe that the soil of Santorini, which had come out of the volcano, has special properties that make it different from all the soils known throughout Greece. They experimented with it, arousing their curiosity, and ended up not only using it by mixing it with lime, which was already known to them, but also producing a mud, which was more water resistant and could, uh, and, and could to thicken in it, unlike other deposits of natural sand and lime, but then after expanding their studies, they found that the finest material of the uh, Santorini soil, which existed, is a very small percentage, perhaps less than 20%, is the most essential. For this reason, they invested in a method known only to them, which they applied on the extensive scale for the production of geodetic pigments, which they used for the painting and painting of ancient Greek vessels. They made these incomparable works of art, and the durability of which even in the sea, in, with the passing of uh, time, not only of centuries, but also of millennia, remained unchanged. Question. It's known that the manufacture of cement today presupposes the combustion of, compo of uh, components in furnaces. Did that happen even then? Answer. In terms of production, the difference with today's cement is that all over the world it's made in simple kilns, to which they add a mixture of raw materials, which is baked there, while in ancient Greece, I think they used double kilns. One of them was none other than the volcano, where the natural geodesic, geodesic material was baked in the bowels of the earth, which was then used as a raw material to make cement. The second kiln was the artificial one, where they baked the limestone and extracted the lime. 
In combination now with the method of water suspension of the treated material of the volcano, the mixing of the Thera Santorini soil with water, and the removal of water after 24 hours of sedimentation, they succeeded in obtaining the top layer of the level, which is one component of cement. The second ingredient, as we said, is the lime cooked in a second oven. These two materials in a certain portion to each other and with the addition of water give an alloy which has the same chemical properties as today's Portland cement. Therefore, the only essential difference between ancient cement and today's cement is that the first was produced based on the inspired technology of ancient Greek techniques. This is from Kaliteroterra.gr uh, on uh, a Greek article I translated for you from the Adrastica. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support.